online module that they were going to use with students or that they were going to re-release out onto the web and they construct that by reusing smaller pieces of OER and constructing them into a larger structure and that's where the licensing became very important because it was attached to institutional reputation. Now, having said that, the majority of people that we spoke to, in this case um, mainly the uh, academic staff, saw open educational resources in a much more flexible way. And to them, it was the educational aspects of the resources, not surprisingly, which were more important to them. So how relevant they were to their program of study, whether they solved a particular teaching problem. They weren't necessarily considering licensing. They were very respectful of the idea of citing where the resource came from. Um, but they weren't necessarily looking at it in a strict legal sense. So that led us to produce this iceberg metaphor in which the tip of the iceberg is where that kind of visible reuse is taking place and uh, Creative Commons or license, open licenses of those form become very important. But the vast majority of reuse is taking place below the waterline, if you like, within programmes of study, within courses, which are relatively private spaces. So, for example... Um, resources that have been placed in virtual learning environments for specific modules or perhaps using images in, in PowerPoints. Uh, this seems to be fairly standard practice. And below that waterline, where it's uh, less visible, if you like, the, uh, the importance of licensing is not something that people were really considering. It's a relatively kind of low-risk scenario. One of the key messages that came out of the study that came from tutors, but especially from students, was the value of collating lists or embedding resources into spaces like virtual learning environments. Now, students recognised, especially early stage students, that they couldn't necessarily critically evaluate the search return from something like Google. They didn't know whether they were going to be wasting their time uh, looking at maybe irrelevant or inaccurate sources. And so they wanted to go somewhere trusted. They wanted to go somewhere where there were just a simple list of resources that uh, tutors had put together that they knew had, were, were valid and relevant. And although that, that isn't particularly pedagogically glamorous, it was the case that students kind of expected this and really appreciated it and took advantage of it. Yes. So that's one specific example of reuse, but obviously there are different forms of reuse in different contexts. It's, as I say, a large space. So that led us to create this, this sort of map of, of the reuse landscape. Now, out of our data, uh, quite a lot of the activity was in that independent uh, quadrant, but most of it was where the independent quadrant blurs into the strategic or the appropriated. Okay, so this is what I was just talking about in terms of gathering together resources in virtual learning environments. Um, we did also find activity in that ratified quadrant, which is, would be in the tip of the iceberg. There was less of that, proportionally speaking, uh, and it could be the case that that's because